Hello, my name is Tom Sean. Today's video, what I'll be doing is talking about hyperinflation. Okay, first of all, who loses and who wins from hyperinflation? So, who loses from hyperinflation? Well, whoever holds the local currency, the currency of which the state, the government has hyperinflation, they lose money. They don't lose money in the terms that they lose it physically. It's how the value of money changes over time. So let's look at the nominal value. Let's take an example of a person that is about to retire and has $100,000 of US currencies in their bank account. In one year, if we have 20% inflation, the real value of that $100,000 becomes $80,000. So it still has a face value of $100,000, but only it is worth $80,000 in a sense that it can only purchase $80,000 worth of stuff because everything has increased in value over time. So for someone to lose, one must win. So who wins in this equation? Because money, if something exists out there in the economy, it's because somebody's taking advantage of it. Somebody is winning from that equation. So who is winning? You should always tell yourself that in the back of your mind, if somebody loses, who's winning? Who's winning from this equation? So first of all, let's remember how money is created. One dollar currency is created from debt, okay? The only way to pay off debt is through inflation. Remember that. The government and the federal bank can't pay off physically their debt. The only way, the only tool that they have is to print more money which creates inflation. There's many parts of inflation. There's asset inflation and there's the in the economy inflation. And both of them are separate. Usually when they print money or they do quantitative easing, what they do is that they buy assets. So it doesn't really create inflation in the economy because they've learned how to separate the two. And I made a video, uh, I, I made a video concerning that information. All right, so who wins? Anybody that has debt wins. But you have to remember not all form of debt can be paid through inflation. Debt, debtors who can cover their debts or roll them over. What does that mean? Because businesses usually roll their debt. What happens when it comes to the end of the loan? They just take on another bond and cover the first one. So they never physically pay off that debt. It depends. Some companies will. And you, you can roll over that debt and you could also, uh, you have to make sure that you're able to cover those debts, okay? So that is hyperinflation. Who loses, who wins? Let's go over again what I've just said a step faster. Hyperinflation, who loses? Anybody who holds on to that money. If you're saving money, you put it in your, your bank account, you're losing money when it's hyperinflation. If you hold on to assets, they tend to go up in value because one and the other are inverse correlated. So for someone to lose, somebody's got to win. If the $1 of a currency is created from debt, then the only way to pay off that debt is through inflation. In times of war and times of uncertainty, they usually create a lot of hyperinflation to pay off that, that debt compared to GDP. Now the only way to pay off that debt is through inflation. Who wins? People who have debt and they're able to pay off that debt. It has to be long-term debt. Always remember, your debt interest cost has to be lower than inflation. If it's lower than inflation, then inflation is paying off your debt. And long-term debt usually has a tendency to be lower than inflation. All right, so that's it for hyperinflation. If you guys like this kind of information, subscribe, leave it a like button. Leave a comment and I'll be seeing you on the next video.